Hello and welcome to a new game from the TCC Cup 16th edition. This is a game from round 2 or the round of 16 engines where Lila played Chess Brain and this is their fourth game of the match. Chess Brain is an engine developed by, and I apologize in advance for mispronouncing his name, Roger Zulsdorf, probably, I'm not sure. So this is game four of their match. Let's see the pairing three and how Lila got into the quarterfinal. As we can see in the first round, she played Piraruku and managed to win five to two. I reviewed game one of their match and now I'm reviewing game four of the match, Lila versus Chessbrain. Lila managed to win 4.5 to 1.5 and in the quarterfinal, Lila will play Scorpio, an engine who became very, very strong after switching to, to using a neural network for evaluation. All right, so let's get back to today's game. Lila managed to win with black, which happens quite rare, not only for her, but for anyone really participating in this very, very strong competition. Winning with black is usually something very, very special. And we have a French defense, and we know that Lila loves to play against the French defense. She has many, many wins against the French defense. She likes to obliterate the competition in this opening. But let's see how she can do with black. We have d4, d5, and now after knight c3, we have bishop b4, the Vinaver variation. And here black threatens to win a pawn, so white needs to make a decision. Either play e5 or take on, on d5. In this one, we have the delayed uh, exchange variation of the Vinaver with pawn takes on d5. And after the recapture, we reach the end of the book. And uh, in this position, uh, Chessbrain played bishop d3, which is a very, very good move, develops this bishop to this very nice diagonal and also prevents black from developing the bishop to f5. We now have knight f6 and knight e2 which uh, makes a lot of sense. Developing this knight to f3 is not so great because now after castles, uh, black threatens some uh, uncomfortable checks and uh, after white castles short two, bishop g4 is, is quite an annoying pin on this knight. It's not so easy to unpin because h3 and g4 weakens the king too much and this knight is now on c3 and it's not around to, to go to d2 and help unpinning or defending this knight on f3. So this is to be avoided for white. Instead we have knight e2. If now bishop g4 comes, then f3 is uh, pretty much okay for white. It weakens the dark squares here, but after this bishop comes to f4, he can take care of those weaknesses and white is fine. So instead of bishop f5, we actually have castles. Chess brain also castled. We have rook e8. Chess brain played now bishop g5, pinning this knight and threatening to take him out. And after the queen recaptures, knight d5 would win a pawn. So here Lila played c6. And now after knight g3, threatening knight h5 with more pressure on f6 and threatening to, to weaken black's kingside structure, after which white would be pretty much winning probably, thanks to this very strong bishop. Lila played now knight d7 defending this knight. Now knight h5 is not that strong anymore. We have rook e1 and here Lila played h6 pushing this bishop back. We have rook takes, queen takes and now bishop back to d2. And now since there's no more pressure on, uh, on this knight and also e5 and c5 are unavailable for this knight on d7, this knight went to f8 and he's rerouting himself and um, tried to find some job on the king side, we have knight e2 trying to exchange the dark square bishops. This is uh, Lila's good bishop because it guards some dark squares in black's camp. So of course, chess brain wants to exchange it. So it makes sense to maybe bring this bishop back to d6 and avoid the exchange, but actually white can uh, force the exchange with bishop f4 going back here, runs into c3. So avoiding the exchange is, is impossible at this point. That's why Lila played here queen e7. So is there, if there's going to be a bishop exchange, at least uh, let it be on her terms. 
because now if bishop takes here then after queen b4 Lila would be threatening this pawn on b2 and forcing some move that uh, white doesn't really want to make but instead of bishop takes chess brain played c3 forcing the bishop back to d6 and now he played bishop f4 we have bishop d7 queen d2 rook e8 and now chess brain took out the bishop and after queen d6 he actually even went for a queen exchange that Lila avoided with queen e7. But this allowed though the queen to go to c7 and attack b7. And it's not so easy to defend this pawn. It's only possible by moving this bishop away, but then Chesbrain could exchange the queens. However, Lila didn't care about the b7 pawn and she played here h5, intending to push this knight back with h4. And after h4, the knight would like to come to f5, but at this point it's not possible because after bishop takes at the end of the line, uh, white would be losing, of course, this knight on e2. Black would be a piece up. So this is not yet possible. That's why chess brain played first knight f4, not only removing the knight from the e5, but also attacking h5 twice. But Lila played here g6 defending this pawn and taking away the f5 square from the knight now h4 comes it cannot be stopped really so in anticipation chess brain played knight f1 and he's probably intending to reroute this knight to e3 to block the e5 now we have h4 still and in this position chess brain finally decided to take this pawn on b7 a move that lila doesn't really like for white she thinks that this is a bad move she evaluates this at minus 0.7 now for black. The problem is that after queen b7, the queen left this diagonal. And this now allows Lila to play queen d6 with tempo on this knight. And it's very interesting how these two engines evaluate this position completely differently. Because here after g3, Chess Brain evaluates that his position is quite okay. He won a pawn. He's very close to winning another one. And... Uh, black doesn't really have an attack or anything and in the short term he's right but in the long term there are some light square weaknesses here and lila still has a light square bishop and the prospects of creating something on those light squares has driven lila into into this variation there are no concrete lines of course no forced lines but just the prospects of managing to do something on the light squares is enough for lila to go for this and actually in this position, Lila now played knight h7. This knight is heading to g5 to attack these light squares. We have queen takes on a7, winning the other pawn. And after knight g5, we have queen a3 going for a queen exchange. But chess brain has to be careful because now after knight f3 check, king g2 attacking this knight loses for white after queen takes, pawn takes, and now knight e1 check hitting also the bishop when uh, g5 would be threatening to win a piece so this would be forcing white to pretty much give up the exchange but now after rook takes on e1 of course uh, white would be much better white has these pawns here on uh, the a5 but this rook can easily pick them up and the black's position is much better so instead of uh, king g2 we have king h1 but now came queen c7, Lila was the queen exchange. We have bishop e2 now attacking the knight. But now after knight g5, Lila would be already threatening some nasty stuff in connection with this idea of playing bishop f5, removing this bishop, and after the knight recaptures, play bishop e4 check. And together with this knight, black would be threatening mate. So chess brain has to be careful. But he played here c4. Another move that Lila criticizes because this now allows her to clear this long diagonal for the bishop or the queen. And um, she evaluates this already at minus 1.6 for black. She played here c5. And if, for example, the queen would take on c5, then after queen b7, we already see white's problems. Lila is threatening to take on b2. And once the b2 pawn is gone, she would be attacking the rook and also the bishop. And uh, she would be also threatening d takes on c4, of course. But even stronger than d takes on c4 would be knight e4, attacking the queen, but also 
the f7 square. So we can see that queen takes on c5 is not really possible. So chess brain took on d5 instead, but now after c takes on d4, this queen now has access to c2 to attack the bishop. Also, the e3 square now is taken away from the knight, which went for d2 now instead. But after knight e4, attacking f2 and the knight, the knight has to exchange itself. And now Lila continued with rook e4. And after queen d3, defending the bishop f3 and also attacking d4 and the rook, we have queen e5. And in this position, Lila is already threatening knight h3, decoying this knight and then picking up the light square bishop after which the weakness of these light squares would be even more pronounced. So we have rook f1 so that after knight h3, knight takes and rook takes, at least f2 is guarded and this allows now the knight back to f4 with tempo on the rook. But after rook takes on b2, Lila took back one of her pawns and she's also threatening bishop b5, skewering queen and rook. At this point, Lila evaluates this at minus 2.6. We have queen f3 and now bishop b5 still. And after rook c1, h3. And the torn pawn is installed. The mating net is created. And uh, white is in trouble. If the knight takes on h3, then the knight is not guarding the d3 square anymore. And uh, this would allow Lila to advance the d pawn. And if the pawn advances, then it can easily go to d2. And if that pawn reaches the seventh, then white would be unable to handle it. So that's why instead of knight h3, we have king g1. But now after queen f5, the queen is supporting d3 anyway. And um, panicking, chess brain tried here some activity with queen a3 attacking the rook. But now came rook b1. And of course, exchanging this rook is not possible because queen b1 comes with mate. So the rook can take, the queen has to defend the rook. We have queen c5, but now came g5, attacking this knight. And if this knight moves away, then after queen f3, Lila would be threatening mating one. So the knight was forced pretty much to take this very dangerous pawn on h3. But now after rook takes, queen takes, and queen takes on h3, Lila is a piece up. Chess brain has here this check, but after king h7, uh, all the light squares are covered. There are no more checks, and Lila is also threatening queen f1 mate. So we have queen back to c1 to guard the mate. But now came queen f5, and once this pawn on d5 falls, Lila would have very dangerous threats on, on this diagonal. We have queen d1, and after queen takes on d5, we have a4, bishop c6, and now queen d3 check this is only a check and after king g7 mating one is threatened pushing f3 doesn't help just loses a pawn so the king started running but now lila took on a4 and she's threatening again a skewer winning the queen and uh, we have now king e1 but after bishop b5 queen c2 and queen e5 check we have king d2 and uh, after queen e2 check and king c1, the game was finally ended in, uh, in Lila's favor. There are many ways to win uh, by keeping the queens, but the simplest here is just exchange the queens and uh, then uh, the king can't really approach the pawn. If he tries something like this, then black just pushes d3. And of course, the king will easily pick up these pawns on the king side and black wins. A very, very nice win with black. I would like to thank you Guilherme for your uh, recurring $3 contribution and I would also like to thank to René, Adolf, Mark, Gary, Sebastian, Todor and Radu for their contribution. Please subscribe, like and share and check out some of the other games on the right. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.